Here's a guy who thinks that Christians have more evidence than atheists. First of all, you got to realize this, is that if the atheist gives a claim that there is no God, you got to realize this. To make a statement like that is a very strong statement. It's a very strong statement to just say there is no God. Because you got to realize that our God is a strong being and all of the creation of the universe rides upon it. So to just discount all of that, you need strong proof of that. I haven't heard a convincing argument that the universe's existence logically requires the existence of a god. I'm glad to see that this guy takes the idea that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence seriously, even though he's under the misapprehension that the assertion that there is no god is an extraordinary statement. But the thing is this, is that a strong claim of no god, it thus requires strong proof to disprove it. There's no God, okay? Give me proof. What are they going to do after that? They can't give you proof. Isn't it amazing how much they demand proof from you? Uh -huh. But they, when they're asked for proof, they don't give you proof. First of all, folks who call themselves atheists don't all claim that there is no God. Many folks who call themselves atheists merely lack a belief in a God, and a lack of a belief requires no evidence because it makes no claim. Secondly, it seems to me at least three common assertions that apologists make about their God are self-contradictory. One assertion is that a God is a disembodied mind. A mind is essentially a kind of process carried out out by a brain or some other cognitive apparatus. A disembodied mind would have to be a process that is carried out by nothing, which is a contradiction. If it is true that a god is a disembodied mind, and it is true that a mind is a process of some kind, which I admit is not a unanimous view, then it necessarily follows that a god does not and cannot exist. Another assertion frequently made by William Lane Craig is that a god is timeless and spaceless. But what would it mean to say that something timeless and spaceless exists? It seems to me that to to say that something exists is to say that it has extension and or location in space-time. To say that something timeless and spaceless exists seems to me to say that something existenceless exists, which would be a contradiction. However, I again note that my definition of existence is not unanimously held. A third assertion about Yahweh that makes no sense to me is that he is both the most moral conceivable being and he is also omnipotent. To be the most moral conceivable being would necessitate that there is no logically possible scenario in which such a being commits evil. However, if it is not possible for such a being to commit evil, then how could it be omnipotent? A being for whom it is not logically possible to commit an otherwise logically possible act is not omnipotent. So it seems to me that these arguments, if their premises be correct, prove a god not to exist. The only thing that keeps me from asserting that a god does not exist is the fact that I'm open to the possibility that there is a definition of mind or existence or morality that are comprehensible to me and compatible with some definition of a god. God. So this is a strong statement. There's no God. That's quite a strong statement you're making, a strong claim. How many people around the world and even throughout history have believed some sort of God or being? Yeah. Why does that matter? This is quite a strong claim and straight statement you're going to be making. That one's going to require strong proof. Strong proof required from a strong statement, strong claim. If you're going to go to court and give a, uh, a normal claim, that's one thing. But if you give a strong claim where society is, revolves around it and history revolves around it, you're going to have to come up with a lot of strong evidence in front of court. How does society revolve around it? And even if society did revolve around it, what relevance does that have with respect to its truth? I don't think society needs theism to function, but even if it did, it would not follow that theism is therefore true. Now you gotta realize this, this is something where history rides upon, and society rides upon, right? Throughout history and society, they have always believed some sort of God. So you need strong proof for that. No, that doesn't logically follow. You gotta realize this, is that but they have no evidence. They can't give you evidence that there is no God. They can't prove it to you scientifically. They can't prove it to you logically. Yeah. They can't prove it to you even observation-wise, yeah, okay? They can't prove to you that there's no God. 
What would a proof that there is no God even look like to you? I'm very clear about what would convince me that a God exists, a definition that doesn't seem self-contradictory to me, a prediction that you can make based on the assumption that a God exists, and an observation predicted by that prediction that is most parsimoniously explained by the existence of a God. But what would convince this guy that a God does not exist? If nothing would convince him, which I suspect is the case, then his request for evidence is disingenuous. Now, the thing is, is that when we say it that way, then they complain and they whine. They complain and whine saying that, well, what you're doing is pretty much impossible because what you're doing is that you can't disprove things that don't exist. That's what they're doing. So what they're doing is that they think that when you give a statement that you have to prove that there's no God, they're saying, well, that's impossible. How can I do that? With something that doesn't exist, I can't prove that. Well, here's the thing. That's a, that's a weak argument, actually. That's just going around the basis. They're just trying to make up an excuse for that. It's not a really good reason. It's actually not true that you can't prove a negative statement. Fermat's last theorem is a negative statement, and it was proven. Negative statements that are true by definition can, in fact, be proven. The assertion, no contradictions are true, is a negative statement that is true by definition. To prove that a god does not exist, you would merely have to show that the very concept of a god is self-contradictory, which I believe it to be. However, if a god is not a self-contradictory concept, then it would be impossible to disprove a god's existence. Because you got to realize this, it is true that you can prove things that d don't exist. I can, I'm going to give you these statements, okay? I can prove to you that certain people in our church, such as Stan, Chris, Jack, and Tom, etc. Please, online people, don't think they're backsliding, okay? I'm not judging you guys. I'm not judging you. You're not watching me live, so you don't know what's going on, okay? But anyway... So I can prove to you Tom, Stan, and Jack are not in this church service right now. Amen. See that? I can prove that. I can prove to you that Bill Clinton is right now not the U.S. president in the White House right now. I can prove to you right now that there are no dinosaurs walking here alive in the city of San Jose right now. I can prove to you that there is no Darth Vader. Strictly speaking, you can't absolutely prove any of those things. To prove any of those things, you would have to prove that our senses are always reliable, which you can't prove. The worst example he gives is Darth Vader. How can you prove that there is no Darth Vader in a galaxy far, far away? See, the thing is this. Yes, you can prove that something doesn't exist. That's just a lame argument. It is not true. You can actually, what you need to do, see, is to search throughout the basis. And by searching throughout the basis, comparing the evidences, then you know that it does not exist. You got to use logical reasoning. You got to use observation skills, etc. Going through all the reasons and evidences to prove it doesn't exist. So don't just give a cop out an answer like that, that oh, this is not provable. No, you can prove it. Where's your logic? Huh? Where's your science? You got none. You can prove it. And how do you search throughout the bases for Darth Vader or a timeless, spaceless, disembodied mind? See? Here's another thing. Is that they might whine as well that you can't disprove God. Why? Because you're going to have to do that same thing with Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, they're going to say. To say that, okay, there's no God. And then I'm going to ask you, okay, give me strong proof for that. And then what are they going to do? Well, I can't do that. And then, oh, I win. So that means I, that there is a God. Then they're going to do this on you. Okay, what about, do the same thing right here, okay? There's no Santa Claus. There's no tooth, par tooth fairy. Give me proof of that. Can you give me proof of that? Can you give me proof of that? You can. Ha oh, ha, I win. See, that's their reasoning they're going to use on you. They're going to whine you can't disprove God like you can't disprove Santa Claus and you can't disprove the tooth fairy if we go by this kind of logic. That's what they're going to argue. However, the easy answer is, is that Hebrews, okay, did you read Hebrews? Okay, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is assurance of things not seen. How is that a response to the assertion that you can't disprove the tooth fairy? And then we're also going to look at uh, second P, uh, First Peter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts 
and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a what? Reason. See? It's logic. It does have logic. Reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Notice that they have a false accusation because at verse 15, there is reason. This verse tells you to give a reason why you have hope, but it doesn't say what that reason is. And how is this a response to the assertion that you can't disprove the tooth fairy? So here's the thing. How can we prove this is a false accusation? Do we believe this is a false accusation? Amen. 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 This is a false accusation. It's a false claim. It's a false claim. And guess what? It's not even false proof. They have no proof. That's even worse. They don't even have a false proof. They have no proof for this. Here's the thing, though. With Hebrews 11.1 1 and 1 Peter chapter 3 that we looked at, and we read verses uh, 15 through 16, here's how we argue why you can't do that with the tooth fairy and why you can't do that with Santa Claus. You know why? Because the thing is, is that Santa Claus and the tooth fairy does not have proof. See? We're not just doing a cop-out answer where we give them the burden of proving it, and that's it. We are doing a fair amount where they have to prove it, and we have to prove it too. Oh good, I look forward to hearing your proof of your God's existence. See? So a strong claim, there is a God. There is no God. Both of them are strong claims. You're going to have to give me proof. Do Christians always give proof for that, for there is a God? Yes, they do. They always argue proof. They use logic. They use science. They use history. How do they do that? So based on these three things, you know how we do it. So I don't know if you learned this before, but uh, I'm not going to go over it through it in this teaching. But how we prove God exists with these three is that we use uh, the prerequ prerequisites of logic, common sense of how we are created. What would those prerequisites be? With science, we use the laws of thermodynamics. And not only that, Look at the complications of creation showing that it cannot just be random. It had to be intelligent design. It's a false dichotomy to assume that the only two options are randomness and intelligent design. And then with history, we use historical accounts outside of the Bible that people demanded that there was no doubt a resurrected Savior. There's always doubt when drawing an inductive inference from any kind of evidence. You can't say there's no doubt, least of all with testimonial evidence, which is always the most dubitable, especially when it isn't firsthand, which none of the Gospels are. And then you're going to have to go through all the claims right there to see if they're lying, or if it's a myth, or if it's false. But with history, you can't deny it. History is literally the most easily deniable evidence that you've presented.